Well, hello, pray and share warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope that you are not frozen. I hope that you are thawed out. I think we had a heat wave today. Can uh, compared to um, the other night when it was zero degrees. Who ever knew that it could get like this? Something is in the way of my camera. I don't know what it is. Hmm. Okay, that's weird. Maybe it's this. Oh, it is. It's my phone case. Okay. So again, I'm doing double cameras, which I'm trying to kind of put them one. Uh oh, I lost that one. I don't know where that one went. Oh no. There it is. Put it too far down. I was trying to get them one over, over the other so that um, it won't be like I'm looking in two different places. Okay, well, hello to you. I hope you had an awesome day today. And my day went really fast. I was able to teach my child, though, today. And um, I cooked this morning. I didn't cook tonight. I wanted to make some homemade soup, but no hamburger meat in the store, so it's okay. We're having roast tomorrow. I may make soup out of roast. I may make soup out of leftover roast. Okay, so I have this lovely hairdo going on here. But it's okay. It's all good. Alright, so what I wanted to talk to you about tonight is our God who listens. Does our God listen to us when we pray? And so, um, I have these little stars floating around on this other camera. It's a little bit of a distraction. Anyway, so I wanted to do some of those scriptures with y'all tonight and just discuss about how God does listen to us. He does care about the big things that are going on in our lives and the little things that are going and on in our lives and all the things in between. He does care. But he also wants us to maintain a relationship with him, which means that when we are studying his word and when we are praying to him, we need to have that daily communication with him. And also when we are praising him, when we are spending our time, you know, praising his name and just lifting up his name and just praising and um I'm listening to praise music right now. That's what this is. I have it plugged in today. I forgot it last night. But anyway, I just wanted to talk to you about that. And um, see if you had anything on your mind that you would like to talk about or pray about. Um, God does hear our prayers. And I know sometimes we don't get what we want when we want it so we think oh he's not even listening but he is listening i mean you have to look at it like he never sleeps or slumbers so he's always working on something he's always working something out we'll multiply that times seven billion people i don't know how many christians there are you know in um, but he also answers prayers of people that aren't Christians because that's just the loving, kind God he is. And sometimes those prayers that are answered to those people that have not accepted Jesus as their Savior, that is how they get to um, accepting Jesus as their Savior. A lot of people don't even believe that God is real, you know. And uh, he is so real to me, and he has answered so many prayers for me. Little teeny ones like, my keys are lost, God, help me find my keys. Or, God, I need to find this piece of paper, I really need this. What did I do with it? I, I put things up in good places that when I put it up, it just seems like such a great place. But then two or three months later, I'm like, oh, that seemed like such a great place, but where was that? And um, he will help us find those. Um, he will 
heal our bodies. He will heal others' bodies. He will help us financially. If we have a financial burden, He will help us. I know one thing, it was, it's kind of stupid, but I haven't gotten my license renewed yet. And I got a piece of paper the other day saying that I could do it online, and that made me really excited because I haven't had a chance to go, and I don't want to take my son out just anywhere. Um, because he is everything he touches goes into his mouth so I've really tried hard to protect him this year especially starting last year and even into this year I've been really trying to protect him to keep him from getting COVID I think he ended up getting it anyway he he just came through it so easily like a runny nose a little bit of a cough and he was done he still has a little bit of a rash, though, but he never even ran a fever. He didn't even have the symptoms that we did. We say that children just don't have, you know, that much. Okay, well, let's go ahead and pray. And uh, if you have anything that you would like to pray about, then please put it in the comments. And I will, if I don't pray here, I will pray during my personal time um, in the mornings. I would like to be more of a prayer warrior this year and um, I would like to use this this ministry to do it through. So let's go ahead and pray. Let's lift some things up to God in prayer. We've got people that still don't have electricity, that have not had electricity for days. And... Uh, Water, our water pressure is getting really low tonight. I have a feeling it's going off today, but I, I boiled water yesterday and I boiled some more today, so I'll get those in containers and get them in the fridge and in different places so we'll have water. But we have bottled water too. We have, we have water everywhere. We have water to flush the toilets. We have you know, we were quite prepared because, I don't know, when somebody that says they want to be your president and they say it's going to be a cold, dark winter, I start thinking about these things. I think a little bit more out of the box than most people do, and I think about, okay, well, how do I get done the things that I need to get done here? I need batteries. I need backup generators. I need this. I need that. So... I've bought some of those things. I've bought some of those um, blankets, those um, Mylar blankets that are supposed to keep your body heat in. I've just uh, started thinking about, I'm not a prepper, but I just started thinking about, okay, what happens if, if this happens or if the electricity goes off for days and days and days and it's cold? I never imagined that it would be this cold because it doesn't get this cold in Texas normally. I think this is an abnormal situation and we'd like to do some research into it. I'm not going to say much, but I think it's pretty abnormal. I have stars floating around on me. Um, this other camera down here, I have visual effects. Let me start putting visual effects on this one too, just for some fun. Okay, well let's pray. Let's go to God because He listens to us. And I'm sorry I'm blabbing, but I'm the only one here right now. So I am uh, blabbing. Alright. God, we just praise You and thank You that You do listen to us, God. That You do answer our prayers and sometimes... Our prayers are not according to your will, and we don't get what we pray for, but you do listen, God. It's not that you're not listening. It's that you are looking out for us, that you want the best for us, God. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our healer, God. You are our shelter in the storm. God, there is no God like you. You are magnificent and powerful and mighty, but yet you are compassionate and loving and kind and forgiving and patient, God. 
God, all of your promises will be kept and all of your prophecies will be fulfilled. Your word is truth. And uh, we lean on it. We lean on the truth. We are the children of the truth. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we just pray for the medical workers, for the law enforcement, for firefighters, for first responders, for all branches of our military, for the schools, God. I don't know what they're doing in this freeze. I don't know whether they're having school or not. But God, we just pray for all of these. We just pray for protection and strength, God, that you would meet their needs where they are. God, we just pray also for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus, to be saved. And God, we pray for the prodigals, like we talked about the prodigal son last night. God, there are many prodigal daughters and sons out there. God, we just pray for them to repent and to return to you. To just remember the relationship that they once had with you. God, we pray for all these disasters and events in our country and all over the world, God. We pray for the other states. Texas is in the dark, God, but there are other states that have been affected too. We pray for all these people in all these states. God, I am seeing, I'm seeing the love and compassion of Jesus come out through people. People are giving hotel rooms away. They are giving food away. They are opening up huge buildings for people to stay in, God. Your love and compassion and your unity and your peace is moving throughout our communi community and other communities too. I see it in Dallas. I see it in Houston, God. You are moving in a mighty way, and I just pray at this time, God, that um, people would be moved in your direction, that as they are provided for and that they are cared for, they will see Jesus in the people, the very people that are um, being a help to them. And God, we pray with so much sorrow with all the people that have passed away, God. Just rush Limbaugh today, God. Such a, such a mighty warrior for liberty. Such a mighty warrior for the truth, God. We just pray for his family, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And God, I found out that Carmen, the singer Carmen that we were so blessed to get to meet. Seth and I got to meet him. God, he has passed away too. And he is in the arms of Jesus. He loved Jesus and I know that he is singing for Jesus today. And I think he passed away yesterday, but I just pray for his family and his friends, God, for peace, comfort, and strength. Again, for Pastor Tim Henderson that I listen to on YouTube. God, I just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for him and his family. All the other people that I know personally too, God, that have lost loved ones, I just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. God, it just seems like a lot of people are going home this year, that this is a year that you are, that they are completing their journeys, that they are completing their race, God. And we know, we have the peace, God, that they are in a place of perfect. And they will never be sick again. Many of these have been sick, God. And we, we know there won't be any doctor's appointments. There won't be anything that they have to maintain for their health. Because their health, for once, is going to be perfect. And God, we just thank you. We thank you for that perfect place called heaven our destination once we decide that Jesus is our Savior and we accept Jesus as our Savior, God. Thank you so much. We just, um, we do lift all these up to you, though, that are, are hurting, that their hearts are broken, God. We just pray that they would feel your presence, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
So, so prayer is a form of conversation with God. Opening up that door. Inviting Him into our life. Praising and worshiping Him, giving Him all the admonition that He deserves, all the reverence, all everything that He deserves. I should have been on my knees. I do my prayer on my knees in the morning. I need to get back to doing it at night too. So tonight I want to talk to you about prayer, about the our God who listens. Because He does listen to our prayers. And I think... Maybe one reason why some people think that God is not answering their prayers is because He's not giving them what they want. But sometimes what we want is not according to God's will. Or sometimes what we want, it's not time for. And so we have to wait on Him. So the first verse we're going to look up is Micah 7.7. 7. And Micah is one of those that's really hard to find. So just please bear with me. So not very long and it's just kind of tucked in between uh, some books that are more um, popular that are more popular, that we look at more. Okay, but I found it. Micah 7.7. 7. And if you have my Bible, it is on page 707. But I'm sure you don't have my Bible. So if you need to, look at the front. Sometimes, I, I was looking up Song of Solomon this morning, and I was like, I know it's over there by Ecclesiastes, but I'm not real sure. So I looked it up. I am not, I have no shame in looking up things if I need to. Okay, so uh, Micah 7 verse 7 says, Therefore I will look unto the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation, my God will hear me. So we will look unto the Lord and we will wait for the God of our salvation. Sometimes we have to wait. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, when I fall. I shall arise when I sit in darkness, and the Lord shall be a light unto me. So God wants what is best for us. And sometimes we have to wait for Him to answer that prayer. It's not that He's not listening. It's that things are not in place yet. It's that it is not time. Or maybe we're not ready. Sometimes we're not ready for those prayers that we pray for. We're not ready. God has to prepare our hearts. Sometimes He has to prepare our minds. Sometimes, sometimes physically things have to be in a certain order. So... Don't give up on God. If you pray for something and God doesn't immediately give you an answer. I'm not very good at snapping. Um, don't give up. Keep waiting. Wait on God. Wait on God. Okay, the second scripture we're going to look up is on this other page. Oh, no, maybe not. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's in Isaiah. Isaiah 65, which is back to the left of your Bible. Now, Isaiah is after Job, I think. I know Job is after Proverbs. No, Ecclesiastes is after Proverbs. Isaiah is... After Song of Solomon that I was trying to find. Okay. So Isaiah 65, 24. I have found that since I am spending more time in God's Word, I seem to be able to find things easier. Okay. So 65, 24 says, And it shall come to pass that before they call, 
I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. So sometimes, before we speak, God answers. So maybe everything's in line and everything's ready and you can just answer. Is it really necessary for us to tell God what we need? He knows. But like children, He wants us to come to Him and ask. Like our children. You know your kid's hungry, but you want him or her to communicate that to you also. He wants us to communicate what we need or what we want to him. And while they are yet speaking, I hear. Now that is a close relationship with God. When while we are yet speaking, he hears. That is a close relationship. Okay, well, let's read Psalms. Psalms. There were several in Psalms. Psalms 37, 4 through 5. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. And thy judgment as the new day. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth the wicked devices to pass. So in other words, no matter what is going on in somebody else's life, wait on God. Do not give, on, give up on God. Draw close to Him. Draw close to Him in reading His Word and in prayer and in praise. Uh, make that relationship closer. And rest. Wait patiently on Him. Just rest. Know that He is working it out for your good and for His glory. Okay. Where am I? 5522. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shalt, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. So we need to trust in God. We need to not worry about other, what other people are doing. Um, God told me one day, I was complaining about something. Because we do that, we complain to God. And I was complaining. And he said, well, you have the same problem. He goes, you be you and let them be them. And I go, ooh, that was painful. But it was true. It really was true. What I was complaining to him about, about somebody else, I have the same problem. So, in other words, you be the best you following me and... You don't know their hearts and minds. You don't know all the details. So just don't worry about that. You can pray for them. But you can't, we can't change people's hearts and minds. We can't make people decide things. It has to be a decision that they make on their own. So, anyway. That was, that was a little painful when he did that but God will do that he will call us out because we're his children just like we call out our children and go uh, no that's not right or you're not going to do that or this is what you're going to do right now 
he does that with us too because we are his children so the next verse is 50 15 i didn't do very good on putting these in order but oh well 50 15 says this and call upon me in the day of trouble i will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me Offer, I'm skipping back up. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee. And thou shalt glorify me. So again, again, we need to be thankful for what God gives us. And we need to pay our vows. Which I would think maybe praise and worship. And he may be talking about tithes. I'm not sure. Um, and call upon him in the time of trouble. In the day of trouble. And he will deliver us. And we will glorify him. God's word is so good. And God is so good. And I'm going to share with you some of the things that God has answered for me, too. I, I shared a little bit. But sometimes God's answers, they take a while, and then sometimes they don't. And um, things that I went through when I was much younger, when I was a younger adult, I did not understand because I was really trying to draw close to God during that time. And some very devastating things happened. But now, I can use those devastating things to me at the time that happened. That really drew me closer to God. Really opened my heart and my brokenness to Jesus. And it probably that event in my life caused me to be saved. Um, I can use that now to encourage others and to share with others my experience. I believe as Christians, we are called to do that. We are called to encourage others. We are called to share testimony with others. I am not going to do a big in detail testimony. I'm just going to skim over some things, okay? I feel like I don't know why God wants me to share this right now. The things that we go on go through in life in like my daily read in uh Jesus always was about seeing your treasures as troubles. Seeing your troubles as treasures, sorry. Seeing your troubles as treasures. So as we go through things, it is so hard when we're going through them. It is so hard. But we need to cling to God's word when we go through them. And we need to ask God to um, bring people to us that will help us to grow through them. We can go through things, but we want to grow through things. We want to grow spiritually as we go through things. We want to gain wisdom. We want to um, gain the things that will help others is what we want to do as we go through these troubles. And in a few years, they do become treasures. You go, wow, that is what taught me that. And that is what taught me that. And that is what taught me that. And so, when our son had leukemia, it was really hard. It was really hard. But God taught me a lot of good lessons during that time that built my faith stronger and stronger. And the first lesson he wanted to teach me is praise the Lord in all things. Because no matter what you're walking through, you're walking through it with Jesus. And there are going to be 
blessings along the way. Things that you didn't plan on. Things that, again, you were praying for and you, how is this going to happen? How is this going to work? You know, when, when the doctor said your son has leukemia, I felt like they had just handed down a death sentence to my son. Because my perspective of leukemia was a death sentence. I didn't know. I didn't know that medically they had come so far over the years. So, I didn't know how God was going to save him. Or if he was going to save him. Really. But I knew that God had promised me this baby. I knew that God had promised me this baby in the midst of a miscarriage. I knew that. And I was hanging on to that. I was hanging on to that promise. God, are you going to break this promise to me now? God, have you taken us five and a half years into this and now you're going to break this promise to me? And I was pretty devastated. I cried for three days. Just straight up all day. Off and on. Cried for three days. In the hospital at Cook's. Because I was mourning what my plans were for our child. My plans were for him to get into school here in Glen Rose and do just really great things. Because he has Down syndrome, he already has challenges. He already had physical challenges too. He already had, a, he has a leaky heart valve, a, a leaky mitral valve, but it's very minimal, you know. He already had medical issues going in. So this was June the 14th of 2009 when Seth was diagnosed with leukemia. Um, and my husband, he is he's pretty rock solid in his faith. And so he went outside and he told God, he said, whatever it takes, he said, just save him if you can. And if you can, it's okay. But that wasn't, that wasn't my attitude. I was like pity party for three days. And then I remember one day, like on the third day, and I know it sounds crazy, but on the third day, <laughs> I went outside and there was a bench in front of the hospital. And I was absolutely freezing to death. Because I'm cold natured. I was freezing to death in that hospital. And so I just had to go outside and get and thaw out. I would go out periodically and thaw out. Well this day I went and met with God. And we had a heart to heart. And I talked to him about you know, what about the promise that you made me? Are you going to break this promise? You know, I can't cure a cancer, God. I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. Is my son going to die because of what I know about leukemia? And sitting there on the bench... I don't remember what he said to me. But I remember what I said to him. I said, okay, God, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. You know, I'll do it. I'll pray for other people. I'll, um... Uh, I'll witness. I'll do whatever you need me to do. And, uh... It was six months and that is not a lot of time not when leukemia not when leukemia treatment takes three and a half years
But what happened is that Seth was so sick. So they started pumping him full of chemo. All kinds. They would bring us pieces of paper. I didn't even want to read what the side effects were. Because I knew they were putting poison into my son. And I was just praying that it was going to be okay. So. I'm sorry. This wasn't my plan tonight. I'm going to shut my Bible. So. For three months. We did the chemo thing. And Seth did not get in remission until August. So um, we were there. We didn't all get to come home until Seth's birthday. He got to come home on his birthday. And so the doctors called us in and they said, they said he's in remission. They said, but it's fixing to be winter. And they said, we're going to keep giving him chemo. And we can't guarantee he's going to make it. Because the chemo is weakening his body. And they said, we want to do a cord blood transplant. And I did not want to do that. Because I knew of people that had had bone marrow transplants and they hadn't made it. And I go, why, why put him through it if he's not going to make it? And so I said, I don't want to do it. I was the one that just said, I don't want to do it. And they go, well, it is his best cure. And so... Ricky goes, okay, we'll do it. <laughs> again, <laughs> again, my guy that does, his faith does not waver. And I said, I want to pray about it. And I want to talk to people about it. I don't, I don't want to do it. I don't, I don't feel like I want to do it. And so... Seth got to come home, and then we went back for treatment. He had to go back in the hospital. And within two weeks, miraculously, they had found two perfect matches for him. None of us matched. My daughter, they're not full blood. Um, we didn't match. But... God miraculously found two matches within two weeks. But stubborn me, and y'all will find out about stubborn me as I share my testimony. Stubborn me, yeah, I don't want to do that. That's very drastic. I don't want to do it because what it entailed is it entailed one adult in the room with the kid, which meant that only one of us could stay with him at a time. It meant that he would be in the bone marrow transplant in the hospital for two months. Actually, three. Well, I think it was about two months. Two months. He would be in the bone marrow transplant unit. Very strict about germs. You talk about COVID and the restrictions and the mitigations. I already knew that going into COVID because I had dealt with it with a bone marrow transplant. So, I still didn't want to do it. So, driving between Granbury and Benbrook, back and forth to Fort Worth, to stay with Seth or not stay with Seth. We were, we were kind of back and forth. There was a sign 
And it said, nothing's too hard for God. Because God knows me so well. About three blocks away, there was another sign exactly the same. Nothing's too hard for God. So, I started thinking, well, I mean, everybody in my family wanted to do this. I was the only one that did not. And so I started thinking, well, maybe this is God's cure for him. And then I go, wow, this is so drastic. I, re I still don't want to do it. I still don't. So, um, one day, Ricky went to church here in Glen Rose. And a lady and her husband were at the church and her granddaughter was in the bone marrow transplant unit and she was fixing to get out. And so God sent her to come and talk to me. But before he did that that day, he sent me the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And so I was kind of chewing on that song when she came to my house. So that's like four things. It's like four things that God put in front of me because I'm very hard-headed. And you'll find out I don't I don't say, okay, God, let's do it. I'm, I'm maybe a skeptic. I am better. I've really grown a lot in that area. And I think this is what has grown me a lot in that area is that what God did. And so we did the cord blood transplant on September the 21st of uh, 2009. So that's only three months in. So according to leukemia uh, treatment, three and a half years in and out of the hospital, chemo, radiation, the works, it's, it's bad. It's really bad. So we did that, and it wasn't easy. It was not easy. Because I would come and work on the weekends for the promise, and Ricky would go to work during the week, and we traded out. And we would have to do the cleaning of the hands and the clothes, and if I came home, I had to put clean clothes on before I left. And when I went into the bone marrow transplant, I had to wash my hands. And we had to eat their food. You know, they wouldn't let us bring outside food. So you had to eat cafeteria food for two months. And, and it was so hard. And then once we got released from the hospital, we were at Ronald McDonald House. And we stayed there for a while. And um, then on December the 4th, I got to come home. And really, that's not even six months. Because we went in on June the 14th. December the 4th, we got to come home of 2009. All of us home as a family. Because he did great through the cord blood transplant. He got really sick at one point. But he pulled right through. And so, if anything, if I can encourage anybody that's maybe anticipating doing this I would love to talk to you about it because we are advocates for it it is life-saving it saved us three years of chemo that probably would have taken our son's life and our life our son was five and a half he is 17 now so he had his cord blood transplant when he was six because he was five and a half when he got diagnosed and then he turned six. So he has been, um, in September it will be 11 years. And as of the last time that I took him to the doctor, he is still in remission. So we are definitely advocates for cord blood transplant, which saved us, saved his life. It absolutely saved his life. And yes, we had to do the socialization, the socialization distancing. 
until April of uh, 2010. We social distanced. I stayed home with them. I think that's why when this COVID thing came along, it's like, well, I've done this before. I stayed home with him so Ricky could work. And um, we didn't go to any stores or, you know, take him any place like that. The first outing that he got to have was on Easter Sunday. And something awesome, too, on December the 5th. Um, I think it snowed. I'm not sure. But anyway, we are advocates. And this is why. This is why I know that God listens. I know God listens. Because I was arguing with God about this cord blood transplant. And I was like, God, I don't want to do this. God, I don't want to do this. But God knew what was best. And God had already picked out a day. He already had a match. He already knew how long it was going to take for Seth to recover. He already knew. He already knew going in. But I was like, this is so drastic, I don't want to do this. But it was the best cure for our son. And it worked for him. And it's worked for many, many other kids too. I know other parents that their kids have done cord blood transplants and they have been it was hard. It was really hard. But we are thankful now that we went through it. So, anyway, I, I got through. I didn't even get through all my verses. But I want you to know that our God does listen. He listens to the small things about where's my pen, where's my glasses. I misplace my glasses a lot because I just use them to drive and watch TV. So, to do all this computer stuff. I don't wear my glasses to do my job that I do. I don't wear my glasses. So a lot of people don't even know that I wear glasses, but I put them on when I drive because I can't see without them. And I can't see TV clear enough without them. But anyway, I hope that um, that helped somebody. Um, that was not my plan when I got on here, so I kind of feel like it was a God-led thing. But it is something that um, I feel like God wants me to do this year, is to do more testifying of the what He has done in our lives. That was a really big thing that He did in our life. Uh, lives, He's done a lot of small things, too. Um, just last year, my husband was diagnosed with cancer, and uh, that that was miraculous. When I talk about miracles, I'll tell you about that. I just I felt like this really fit with this because I did not want to listen to God. I did not want to do what He wanted me to do, but I'm so thankful now that I did. So if God is sending you um, confirmation after confirmation, yes, this is what I want you to do. Yes, this is what I want you to do. Then do it. Just do it. Don't argue with Him because He is going to send you so much that you're going to go, okay, I give up. I don't know what to do here because you keep bombarding me with these these things. And so those are the three things that God taught me. Praise the Lord in all things. Nothing's too hard for God. Great is thy faithfulness. And God did not break my promise, the promise that He made to me when I was having a miscarriage. And He told me that I would have my baby. I did have my baby, and that baby is Seth. Seth means granted. And because Seth was prayed for, he was prayed into existence. And our son Seth has been prayed for through his illness, through he is so much more popular on Facebook than I am. I can put his picture on Facebook and he gets hundreds of likes. I am not that popular on there, but he is because he has prayer warriors from all over the world. People from all over the world prayed for him. And if need be today, 
I can call up all those prayer warriors. They are still willing to pray for him. God saved his life. God saved his life for a ministry of hugs and love. Because Seth is nonverbal. Seth has Down syndrome and he has a lot of um, academic challenges that he faces every day. But he loves everybody and he always has a hug for anybody. And he can discern spiritually whether people need a hug or not. And like at our church, he'll trample over other people's feet, get into that person because he loves to hug. He sits on the front pew and anybody that comes by, he either wants to shake their hand or give them a hug. And usually they give him a hug. COVID's been a little bit challenging for him because he doesn't get the social distancing. You know, he doesn't get that. He doesn't understand that. But, like I said, he's had it now. And, and it wasn't that bad for him. And we all had it. And praise God. Praise God. I think the worst thing about having COVID was the not knowing the not knowing okay when is it going to get bad am i going to go to bed tonight and i'm going to wake up in the hospital or when is it going to get bad because we were very blessed and i guess god prepared us to i eat a lot of yogurt and so i feel like my immunity system was up and Ricky had already started taking vitamin D, vitamin K, uh, vitamin C, and zinc. So he was already taking those things. And I take zinc anyway. So, I don't know. I think Seth just skated by because he's a kid. And kids aren't that, they're not that impacted by it. But anyway, I just wanted to share that. And, um... I may have to continue this about God answering our prayers tomorrow night because I really wasn't planning on doing testimony. Maybe once a week I could do testimony because I think that's what builds our faith is to listen to other people talk about their testimony and the things that God has done in their lives. Um, I know there are a lot of people that I talk to and if I hadn't have gone through some of these things, if God hadn't have built my faith up through some of these things, I don't think I would be able to encourage them. I couldn't, I could maybe have sympathy for them, but I couldn't empathize for their feelings had some of these things not happened to me during my life too. Um, Anyway, just maybe add your testimony in the comments if you want to testify to something. I may just have a testify night. Because I think it's important. And I think it does show that God does listen to us when we pray. And so, because I told God that I would do whatever it takes, I started praying for other people. I met other families. We lifted each other up. We were our own support group. There might have been the HIPAA law, but all, all of us knew what was wrong with each other's kids. <laughs> the hospital didn't tell. And I will say this too. This is maybe the last thing I will say about this is that God will appoint and He will anoint your medical teams to come and take care of your kids. And at Cook's in Fort Worth, we had the best. We just had the best. I just, I can't say enough. And even now, as follow-up in the specialty clinic, we still have the best. 
Now I have kind of like backed up away from that for a little while because of COVID. Because I was trying to protect Seth. And this year though, I probably need to get him in to some follow-up visits. And sadly, our cardiologist, um, he, um, he retired. And we had had him since Seth was a baby. And uh, I just went ahead and took him to a regular doctor for endocrine. So I don't know. He's he's going to be 18 in August, and I don't know what that means with Cooks. I don't know whether we get kicked out or whether we stay because um, he was a Cooks patient. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But anyway, I do believe that everyone... And we had a lot of medical teams. We had surgeries. We had... I didn't even... I just glossed over the highlights. I did not give you all the details. We had many surgeries, many medical teams, many many ER visits, many, 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 many over even the following years. And I would say that Cooks is awesome. They are awesome. Aw. Somebody put Rush Limbaugh went to live in heaven. I really liked Rush Lim Limbaugh. There was a, a time where I would listen to him every afternoon. Uh, him and Sean Hannity while I was waiting for Seth to get out of school. I would get my update on the government and what was going on. Um, a lot of people are going to heaven. A lot of races are ending like so quickly either through illness or through COVID or through accidents, like this accident that happened in Fort Worth. So quickly, 133 car pileup. We never have pileups in Texas, hardly ever, like they do in the, in the cities where there's so much snow and ice. But there are a lot of things happening So I want to offer you an invitation to salvation because we don't know. We don't know when our departure date is and God does. I want mine to be in the rapture, but I have absolutely no control over that. That is, that is God's job. So my departure date might be, you know before the rapture. I don't know. So let's read how we have steps to peace with God. Because we separate ourselves from God. And that's another thing about prayer. And that was in there too. Sometimes God doesn't hear our prayers because we do not have that close relationship with Him. And He thinks that we have chosen other things over Him. So we want to maintain a close relationship with God by reading His Word and by praying, by communicating with Him. Um, we want to do that. Okay, well, I'm going to read this. I like these old cartoons. I think they're cute. Oops. This is really hard because I'm one of these cameras. And then, okay, up here. Anyway, I like these old cartoons. So it says, step one, God's purpose, peace and eternal life. God loves you and he wants you to live in peace with him and receive eternal life, eternal life. He does. That is what God wants for every one of us. Every one of us. This is what He wants for us. Since God planned for us to be at peace with Him and to have eternal life, why are many people not enjoying this experience? I do not know. I do not know. I do not think that there is any sin or anything that is worth separating yourself from God. I just don't. 
I just, I just don't. And I've had sin in my life, and there is just really nothing that is important to me as in my relationship with God. Last year, I was getting up at 6.45 in the morning to do my quiet time, and I'm thinking about doing it again because I love my family, but quite personally, I just kind of need the quiet and the coffee and the God and not the, I want to eat, and not the, I want to, you know, me and the cat would get up by ourselves, and I would fix my coffee, and I would sit down, and I would read my U version, and there wasn't anything on the TV, it was just me, and God, and my coffee, and I would read my scripture, then I would come in here, and I would spend some more time with God, praying and then I would do my devotional and then I would pray some more and um, I would write down what he was telling me <sighs> but I've gotten quite lazy and I don't get up at 645 anymore <sighs> maybe I need to okay I'm sorry the Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.1 For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. And that is John 3.16. That is one of my favorites. Because God doesn't want us to perish. God does not want anyone to perish. And that is why He sent Jesus. He sent Jesus so no one would have to perish. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6.23 So step two. Our problem, sin and separation. God did not make us robots to mindlessly love and obey Him. Instead, He gave us a will and freedom of choice. He gave us free will. Free will. He gives everyone free will. You can choose or not choose. But just like we talked about last night, there's a narrow path and there's a wide path. But like Adam, we often choose to disobey God and go our own selfish ways. This side of our nature is called sin, and it separates us from God. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. Romans 3.23 and 6.23 so after Adam sinned, the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden. But your iniquities, I just realized, I don't know what happened to my music, but it's not playing right now. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Isaiah 59 2. So then we have um, step 2. Step two and three. I don't know whether y'all can see that on that one or not. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, step two and three. I mean three and four, sorry. Step three and four. I already did one and two. This is three and four. Step three and four. Step three is God's remedy, the cross. Jesus Christ is the only answer to this problem of separation from God. He died on the cross and rose from the grave to pay the penalty for our sins, completely bridging the gap between us and God. God has provided the only way and we must make the choice. So the choice is ours. We have to make a choice. The Bible says, But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, Romans 5, 8. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Acts 4, 12. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2, 5. Verily, verily, I tell you, whoever hears my word Jesus, and believes him who sent me, has eternal life, and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. John 5, 24. 
So step four is our response. Receive Christ. We can receive Jesus Christ when we believe in his message and trust in him alone to save us. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In John 14, 1. The Bible says, All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him, Jesus Christ, receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Acts 10.43 Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1.12 Okay, and then there's a little diagram. No, it's really hard to get this to where both people can see. Okay, so you got God on one side and you have people on the other side and you have the cross in the middle that says Christ. Okay, so on the people side it says anxiety, sin, separation, eternal torment. It says, are you there? Are you there? Is this the side you're on? And then you've got Christ in the middle, and then you've got God on the other side. Peace, forgiveness, relationship, eternal life. We're here. Are you here on this side? I am on this side because I have received Jesus as my Savior. I did that when I was 31. Did it change my life? Um, it did. It gave me peace. But Christianity is a growth thing, too. So you have to grow in your Christianity. It's not an overnight, oh, I know everything about the Bible. You have to study it. And you have to go and listen to other people speak about the Word, listen to God's messages through them. And uh, you have to go to Sunday school and, and learn, you know, from other people. Anyway, it's a growth. We have to grow. Okay, so this is, I can't even read it, to see the little cartoon. Okay. How to receive Christ. So this is how we receive Christ. We admit, admit your need. I am a sinner. Be willing to turn from your sins. Repent. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross and rose from the grave. Through prayer, invite Jesus Christ to come in and control your life through the Holy Spirit. Receive him as your Savior. So it says what, excuse me, it says what to pray. And so this is what it says. And I'll leave a space if you want to pray this. If you want to accept Jesus as your Savior, then please, please, please do not keep waiting because time is running out. And this over here is a picture of the New Jerusalem coming down from heaven. And God has prepared a perfect place for us. So don't stay here and be left behind and go through all the craziness to come. We think it's crazy now, but the Holy Spirit is still here. And uh, God's children are still here. But it's really going to be crazy when we leave. Okay, and it's not going to be a party either. It's not going to be good at all. Okay, so this is what you pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am sinful and I need your forgiveness. I believe that you died to pay the penalty for my sin. I want to turn from my sin nature and follow you instead. I invite you to come into my heart and life. In Jesus' name, amen. So God's assurance, his word. 
If you sincerely prayed this prayer and asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, do you know what he has given you? When you receive Christ, you are born into God's family through the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit, who indwells every believer. This is called regeneration or new birth. God bless you as you begin your new life in Christ. The Bible says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10:13. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8:9. Therefore since we have been justified through faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5:1. He who has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 12 through 13. And this is a, this is a good news tracks. Good, goodnewstracks.org from crossway.org okay this isn't anything that I made up this is something that I just read you so if you if you did pray that prayer then welcome to the kingdom family of God your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life and the angels are rejoicing and um, if you want to grow closer in your relationship with God then read his word every day and pray pray That's what we talked about is pray to our God that listens because he does listen to us and uh, also find you some praise and worship music mine stopped a while ago so I took my little ear thing out I don't know what happened to it but I have this other camera going so I can't just like go find out so it's okay uh, maybe that's how God intended it to be. I wasn't intending on doing testimony tonight, but it just seemed to fit. It just seemed to fit. And uh, so anyway, that is something that God has called me to do this year is to testify more about the goodness, the answered prayers that he has done in our lives and um, the little and big things that he's done. I am thankful and grateful. And so I am going to do the blessing. Only got five scriptures done with all the maybe maybe my testifying. Maybe it touched on some of the others. I don't know. Alright, so let's go to numbers six twenty four through twenty six. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. We all need some peace. We're all looking for some peace. People in Texas are looking for some electricity and some water. So uh, please continue to pray for us in Texas as we are experiencing colder weather than what we're normal what is normal for us I feel like we had a heat wave today it got up to 21 I don't know what the temperature is right now but um, I heard that some of the people that did not have electricity have it now so that's a good thing and maybe we'll, everybody will get back on the grid I don't know I don't know how we got blessed. Tomorrow may be our day that we don't have electricity. I don't know how they're doing the rolling thing. I do know that we have a new a new um, power plant up above our house that many times last year we didn't have electricity because they were putting that in and they would turn our electricity off. So I don't know. Anyway, I am praying for everybody. Um, and I'm I'm prepped for it too. I have batteries. I have candles. I have really all we need is wood for our fireplace. 
but it's uh it just wasn't what any of us planned this year, I guess. Just like COVID last year, it seems like every month there's something this year so far. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. We, we know who is in charge. God's in charge and He listens to us when we pray. He's going to listen to us. And even though we don't get exactly what we think that we need, Maybe it's not what he wants for us. Maybe it's not part of his plan and purpose for us. We just need to be patient and uh, just wait on him. Just wait on him because he has our best interest at heart. He wants good things for us. He wants good things for his children. He will protect his children. He will take care of his children. Our job is to share his truth and to share the gospel to others that maybe don't know. Maybe they weren't brought up in a Christian home. Maybe they don't know anything. Uh, everything that I say to them is probably they have never heard of any of this stuff. Um, but it's okay. Because God loves them and He will accept them. All they have to do is um, invite Jesus in and uh, ask for forgiveness and if they keep messing up just keep asking for forgiveness because just because we're saved we're not perfect we're never going to be perfect so anyway I think that I will pray and I will get off of here and go and feed our son I'm sorry, I was thirsty. And that's water. Um, this is my Thomas Kincaid cup that one of my friends gave me. And when it when you have hot stuff in it, the little windows light up. But I have cold water in it, so they don't. They don't. But I like my I like my coffee cups. I have lots of different ones. Um. <clears throat> I see my friend Josie is here. Josie, do you have any prayer requests? Alright, well I'm going to pray and uh, get off of here. She may be talking to somebody else. God, we just, uh, we just come to you, God, and we are so thankful that you are a God that listens. You are our God that listens, and you listen to our very small things, to our medium things, to our large things, God, <clears throat> and you answer our prayers, too, for, for the small, medium, and large things. God, and sometimes the solutions that you have are so much better than what we're praying for. God, because you know what's best for us. You have a purpose and a plan for each one of us. And you will protect us and you will take care of us. You will um, provide for us, God, because that's who you are. You created us to worship you, to have a relationship with you, God. And you want that closeness from each one of us. And God, you know that we're not perfect. But you know that you created us in your image. And God, we just lift up the sick people to you tonight, God. People that are fighting this disease, we just pray for healing and we pray for strength, God. We just pray that every day they would just get stronger and stronger. And God, we just pray for family members that they would also be strong, God, and that um, and they would be protected from this disease. We also pray for um, all the many people that have no electricity, God. Three million people, maybe more, in Texas alone, and 13 more states, too. God, you know each one of them. You know each precious face. God, we just pray that you would 
um, help meet their needs wherever they are, God. That you would just be with them and that they would feel your presence. That through others' kindness, God, they would see the love and compassion of Jesus. That they would see the hands and feet of Jesus. God, I've been so impressed with our community and people here in our community that have been helping other people. It's been very impressive. Um, I have just kind of stayed home because it's cold and I don't drive on this. Now, Ricky has been out and he has been helping people because you can't keep him home when it's like this. He actually likes to drive in it. And thank you for protecting him in all of his travels and all, all the different places that he's been. God, I just pray for traveling protection for everyone. I pray for Melissa and her baby, God, that they will just become stronger and stronger every day. I pray that you would heal Josie's body, God. Just make her feel whole. Help her to be able to breathe better. Help her back not to hurt, God. We just pray, God, for Mike and his family, that you would protect them from, um, that you would keep them warm, that you would meet their needs that they have, God, and that you would protect them from this disease. God, we just, uh, we just pray for all the many schools that are not having school this week, God. We just pray. We pray for this snow that was so beautiful at first. We just pray for warmer days, God, ahead. I believe that's what the weather says that we have coming, and we just thank you in advance for that. And we just want to praise you because even though, even though it's been so bad, God, we have supplies here. We have what we need. And we did not have much in the way of food, but God, you have, you have sustained us. And we know that the supply is, um, it's getting smaller here because the trucks can't get here. God, we just pray for these roads to be cleared so that the trucks can bring the supplies that we need, that we all need in this town and in this community and the surrounding communities. God, we just thank you that you're a sovereign God and that you knew, you knew this was going to happen. I guess we did too, but I don't think we saw the severity of it. Um... I wondered about somebody saying it was going to be a cold and dark winter. I wondered um, if it really would be or not. And I guess I have my answer to that. So God, just please be with us. Please be with us. Please draw the people that are not saved to you, God. Please convict them of their sins and draw them to you. Draw them back to you. We just pray that you would open the eyes and the ears of the lost God. That you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. God, we just thank you. We just want to spend more time in your presence, God. We want to testify of the goodness, the good, the goodness that you've done in our lives. The times that you have answered our prayers because you are the God that listens to us. And the, the times, God, that we can use to encourage others that are going through similar things. That is why we have the troubles in our lives. So that later on we can see them as treasures. Times that we just didn't go through, that we grew through spiritually. So God, we just thank you. We just thank you for all the many blessings that you bestowed upon us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, do y'all have power again, Josie? Some people on Walnut Springs do. I know, I've been praying for them. Like I said, I thought we were going to be one of them, but we lost water um, that first night, and so I've been boiling water just in case the, our water supply got contaminated. But we have water again. Do y'all have water and power?
I think that it's going to get warmer tomorrow and just start getting warmer throughout the weekend. I look forward to getting in my car and driving again. If it will start. I was having trouble with it before this cold front hit. May have to buy a battery. Okay, well I'm gonna get off up here. I gotta go get my child fed. I think my husband's feeding him. It's getting where he feeds him more than I do. He's gonna be ready to go back to work. Um Alright, so if y'all have any prayer requests, put them in the comments. Oh, you're in Glen Rose now? So you have power here in Glen Rose? Alright, so if you have anything to put in the comments, then put them in the comments. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, please put them in the comments. I am also on Awesome Treasure 777 on YouTube. Um, I am taping it right now while I do this one. And I've also opened up an account, Awesome Treasures Ministry, on Gab. I'm trying Gab, which is pretty good. Lots of freedom on Gab. I really like it. So, um,. God asked me to expand my ministry, so I am trying to do that. Um, don't have a whole lot of followers over there yet. I'm thinking about doing Telegram also. Um, I did open up an account on Rumble, which is like YouTube, but it's uh, more conservative. Oh, you do? Well, that's good. We do too. I don't know whether all of Glen Rose has power, but we do. And ours blinked off last night, but then it came back on, and then it slowed down one time, and then it stayed on, so I don't know. I don't know. Alright, well, I will talk to you later. Take care and stay warm. And um, have a blessed rest of your night and a blessed tomorrow and good night.